49ers 13, Packers 10. Aaron Rodgers chokes again. I've got some fun stats. Mm. I know that you have some fun stats, too. Do you yeah. want to go back and forth a little bit? Sure. Okay. Uh, Aaron Rodgers is currently tied with Trent Dilfer, Neil O'Donnell, and Rex Grossman for conference championship wins. Mm-hmm. I did know that fact. Um, it's also interesting that Jimmy G, so he, he could also be tied with Matt Stafford if he wins on Sunday. Mm-hmm. And if Jimmy G wins, Jimmy G would have won two NFC championship games, and he's been a full-time starter, not injured, for two seasons. Oh, that's interesting. That's pretty crazy, right? I would say it's, yeah, it's, it's fun. Yeah. It's a fun stat. Um, how about this one? Rodgers once in his career has had a top five defense. Just happens to be the year that he won a Super Bowl mm-hmm. when he had one of the best defenses mm-hmm. in the league. Um, how about this one? The, the Packers won 39 regular season games the last three years. So hmm. uh, they went 13 and three, 13 and three. Wait, did they go 14 and three this year? No, they went 13 and four. Either way, they won a lot of regular season games and they got bounced. From Lambeau Field, where it's tough to play PFD. No, you can't. You don't win in Lambeau in the playoffs, Big Cat. Unless it's the last 20 years where they actually oh. lead the league in home playoff losses with seven. That's crazy. Seven times they've lost at Lambeau. At the Frozen in, Tundra? Yeah, at the Frozen Tundra. It's a scary place to go. Unless it's Aaron Rodgers wow. playing. Brett Favre rolling over <clears throat> in his Crocs. I, uh, I don't really know where to start. I love this game so much. Um, Aaron Rodgers choke. And I know the special teams. Let's just do the special teams to get it out of the way. The special teams we mentioned on Friday, they, are, they were the worst in the NFL. You knew, like, the playoffs, the old saying goes, like, your weaknesses are shown in bright lights in the playoffs. Like, that's what happens. Whatever you're bad at, it will get exposed when come playoff time. That happened. Like, the, the block kick to end the first half, obviously the, the punt uh, block that changed the entire game, and then it, to add all of it together, Robbie Gold, who I love him so much, Galaxy Brain, the Bears cut him in 2016 for this moment. Uh, they had 10 guys on the field, the Packers did, yeah, uh, to try to stop that kick. Their special team has been atrocious all year. You knew it was going to rear its ugly head. It did. With that said, Aaron Rodgers is your MVP. He's the best quarterback, quote unquote, quote unquote, in the league. He should have won that game. You got to score more than 10 points. You Not ha- only you that. Ha- you have to score more than 10 points. You have to score more than 10 points. You, the block kick happened. Like, stunned everyone. 10-10. Crazy. How did the special teams let us down again? Aaron Rodgers has the ball with four minutes left to win the game at home. Mm-hmm. It takes Patrick Mahomes 13 seconds. It takes Aaron Rodgers, well, infinity seconds, because he wasn't going to score a touchdown for the rest of time on Saturday night. He choked. And I don't and I, I think I actually think most Packer fans will agree that he was bad and he all he was doing all night, it's hero ball. He was trying to force it to Devontae Adams. And if Devontae Adams wasn't open, he'd check it down to Aaron Jones. There was twenty one targets to Aaron Jones and Devontae Adams, six to the rest of the team. Mm-hmm. That's insane. Like Brady would never do that. Josh Allen just showed you what he can do. Like, he basically was like, I'm only going to throw it to Devontae Adams, even on that last throw that he might have made as a Packer. Lazard is, cu- is wide open in the middle of the field, and he's like, I'm predetermined, going to throw it as deep as I can to Devontae Adams. Aaron Rodgers has become what he replaced in old Brett Favre was the same guy. He was that guy at the end of his career. He'd only trust Donald Driver. He did that in the game against the Giants in the NFC Championship game in 2008. That was what we saw. We saw Brett Favre reincarnated in Aaron Rodgers. It's crazy, and I loved every second. Okay, uh, I, I'm with you, and I love the fact that you're happy. I just want to say that I support you in that endeavor. I don't think he's Brett Favre. I don't think Aaron Rodgers late is Brett Favre. Brett Favre. And I don't think he's Brett Favre because even late Brett Favre was still taking crazy chances and doing cool shit. Aaron Rodgers, just, he just gets very, very conservative sometimes with his, with who he's passing the ball to. He only trusts a couple guys. That's uh, Brett Favre, though. That's what Brett Ray, Favre's doing. Like, he would but, only but take Donald Driver. He doesn't take chances is, no, is the I, thing. The chance fine, but the Donald Driver, like, Brett Favre did the same thing with Donald Driver. Brett Favre was bigger than the franchise. That's the thing. Is like, it's crazy, and this is a bigger, like, I'd have this conversation for, 
forever if anyone wants to have it with me, Packers fans. I do think there's something to be said about Green Bay being a, like a small town. A, a ownership is the fans. Their quarterbacks become heroes bigger than the franchise. Like Aaron Rodgers thinks he is like God and he can do anything. That was similar to Brett Favre at the end of his career. That game just needed some intermediate passing from Aaron Rodgers and for him not to play like just terrible, and they win that game. Like Jimmy Garoppolo is – Aaron Rodgers is so much better than Jimmy Garoppolo. They weren't that much different when it came down to like Wait, how the game went. Jimmy G, I think, is two and zero against true. Aaron Rodgers in the playoffs. It's right? true, but that's the thing is like you're the re, you're if you're the Packers going to that game, you're like we have a decided advantage at quarterback, and it just didn't happen. All right, but also when it comes to playing against the 49ers, this game was a lot about the matchup too, because the 49ers just kicked the shit out of the Packers. It was I don't think any team in the NFC matches up well against the 49ers. Actually, I think they're like there are teams that you can make a strong argument for being the best team in the NFC. So you could, you could say the Rams are the best team in the, in the NFC. You could say the Packers are the best team in the NFC. And you could probably say the Bucks are the best team in the NFC. And you could say that all three of those teams are better than the Niners. But somehow, the Niners are actually the matchup that no, neither one of those teams wants to have to play against. But the Packers beat them this year. Like, that, like Aaron, Aaron Rodgers played bad. Very I, bad. I, I don't think it's matchup. I think he played bad. He was bad. He did not throw a touchdown pass. He's the MVP. I mean, like, this is all built for him. They matched up pretty well choked. against him on Saturday. Aaron Rodgers did choke. He played poorly. He should have been able to. You got to score more than 10 points. The crazy part is on that block kick, on the block punt, excuse me, that was returned for a touchdown. If they don't <laughs> scoop that up and score it, I actually don't think that the 49ers win that game. I think if, if they had just fallen on the ball, and it had been, you know, down on like the five yard line or whatever. I think the Packers end up winning that game. Their special teams had to score a touchdown. Like I didn't trust the Niners' offense to be able to do anything at all that game. Yeah, I mean they, they needed moved that the ball. Touchdown. They did move the ball nicely at times. They just Jimmy G threw that pick at the end of the first half that was like, what the fuck? And he tried to Jimmy G tried to throw that game away a million times. I just go back to like Aaron Rodgers, is the MVP. Everyone says he's the best quarterback in the NFL. That guy, like what we watched on Sunday night with, with what we watched with Matt Stafford making those big throws. Like Matt Stafford won that game, and we're going to get to it, but Matt Stafford won that game with a big time throw to Cooper Cup. And Aaron Rodgers just locked in on Devontae Adams all game, and it wasn't like he just didn't make any of the throws that the MVP of the NFL at home, one seed, should make, and I'm very happy. You know what's crazy to think about is that if Big Ben hadn't worn a visor in that Super Bowl, Aaron Rodgers would be Dan Marino. Yeah. But he won it early. Yeah, he won he's it early. He's obviously an incredible quarterback. I, I know the Packers fans would be like, You're, listen, Packer fans will call me a loser. I know I'm a loser. My team's a loser franchise. Last night was like the best night of the Bears season. And I'm like, that's loser talk. But when you admit that you're a loser, what else can you do? Like, you can't hurt me when I've already hurt myself. What do you think was going on with the vibes on the special teams? Because we said all season. It's not just Mason Crosby. It's Bajorquez. It's the long snapper. It's like the three of them. No, they're bad. For whatever, they just don't vibe. They yeah. don't vibe together. It's like they tried to tried to just put three guys in a room. And sometimes there's just you know people don't work well with each other. for whatever reason. Bajorquez, I, I know that I'm butchering his name. Bajorquez. No, that was Jake always going to be their problem. But but <clears throat> they're. The, everybody was always just like a, a quarter second off with everybody else this entire season. And you could see it when, when Crosby would miss a field goal or get it blocked. His first look wouldn't be like either at the ground where he stepped, which a lot of kickers do when they miss, because they have to play like Randy Bullock did that when he, he like slipped on that imaginary route uh, mm -hmm. last year. Usually kickers would do that. His glance of, of, of hatred would always be at his holder. Yeah. And then the long snapper would sometimes look back at the two of them and he'd be pissed at them too. They just that was their that was their Achilles heel all season long. All season. And I think you said that like it gets magnified, like the more attention gets put on in the playoffs. I think that whatever you're bad at in the regular season actually just gets worse in the playoffs. Like with the with the pressure that's applied well, to it. Well it gets exposed if because teams get teams are really good and they know that they can like they can expose your weaknesses. And that's what they did. And that's what they did. That's what the Niners did in terms of defense when they basically said, you know, the first drive, they the Packers ran went right down the field. They were doing single coverage on Devontae Adams. Then they're like, you know what? We're not going to let Devontae Adams beat us for the rest of the night. 
And guess what? Aaron Rodgers never went anywhere else. He just didn't. Like that Lazard, did you watch that that last throw that he had? No, I I know for a fact that you like you've taken your time like like well, yeah, wild, I'm, yeah I'm a loser. which I respect. Uh, you can't hate me for that. I'm no, no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm just I saying I said I'm a loser. I, I enjoy this. I haven't put the hours in reviewing well, it's the just film one clip. It's no, like I, an 8 second clip. I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, he was Lazard was I showed Hank. Lazard was wide open. Wide open. Like okay, and Lazard it was very open. clear that Rodgers was just locked in on Devontae Adams. He was going to throw it that way. I went back. Hank came in. I was already taking notes, and I was playing. At like, at like noon. <laughs> I was playing the 2000. The cat had three sheets of notes filled NFC out. Championship game when yeah, you were, you were, you were so in on past, Donald Driver. You were so far gone past last night, you had moved on, moved oh, on wow. to like Brett Favre. Yes, film this is history what I'm saying. So I'm, I'm, I'm watching the dots. playing hero ball. You know the dots that, yes. that all, yes. the, all the serious analysts put out, which is better than watching football when you just see dots move around on a screen? I'm watching that. Uh, number 13. It doesn't look like there's anybody within 17 yards of him. And it was a clean pocket, and he was standing there. It was hero ball. He was like, I'm going to throw it only to Devontae Adams or Aaron Jones underneath. There was nothing else. Three-man rush. Looks like they added a late. Yeah, he had all the time. They missed the Robert Tanyan. They actually, that would have been like, because he needed someone that he trusted more, but that's also on Aaron Rodgers. Like, guys were open, and he wasn't hitting other guys. So it was hero ball. He's done this before in the playoffs. Crazy he goes uh, hero ball. Crazy Jimmy G stat is that he's nine mm-hmm. and two in his career in games where he throws zero touchdowns. I that love that crazy. stat. That's that's such a great Jimmy he G was stat. I was trying st- to give that game. I away. still don't trust him. Nor should you. Nor should anybody. No one. Um, but I kind of like him now. I like him because he's become the perfect quarterback for the whole quarterback win stat argument. Yes. We're like, yeah. You know what? I think we said this on Friday. All he does like, is win. Like Jimmy G now after winning this game. The guy wins football games. Yeah. What more do you want out of your quarterback? He's a winner. He wins. Intangibles. Um, he also said, fuck the Packers after the game. Which was great. That was pretty cool. Yes. And Robbie Gold, I fucking love you. Uh, Billy, can I get another water? Sorry. I'm yeah. just chugging water. What, where do you think, what happens with Rodgers? Because I do, so, so my, my comparison to late Brett Favre is, it's obviously Aaron Rodgers it doesn't make the mistakes that Brett Favre makes in terms of gunslinging. What my point, my bigger point, I maybe didn't make it well, is you have a guy who is really, really good in the regular season. That last season, Brett Favre like had a little resurgence. Who in the playoffs thinks that like he can kind of do it his way and not play within the structure of the team, and you get a you get a result like last night when the defense, the Packers' defense was incredible. They played their balls off, and remember last year in the NFC Championship game, Packers' defense what they had three picks of Tom Brady. Same thing kind of happened where it was like Aaron Rodgers wasn't able to win a home playoff game where he should have been the guy. Like, he should have done the things. And he's done it in his career. There's been a lot of playoff losses that aren't on Aaron Rodgers. I'm not saying that. He's had some I'm really saying, good playoff games. Though. Yeah, no, he's. I'm not saying he's a choke artist in that, like, every playoff is the same. I'm saying at this point of his career, it's clear that, like, something happens when he gets to the playoffs where he's like, I only trust two guys. I'm going to keep throwing it to them. And that's not. Like, you're not going to win a, a, a big-time playoff game that way. Well, Randall Cobb came back for this game, but he very obviously was not fully healthy. And I think that's the guy that, like, Aaron Rodgers, I think he, like, that's the main reason why Aaron Rodgers kind of held out this offseason was because he basically wanted a guy that he trusted to come back. Right. Or for them to go out and get somebody. So they got, they brought Randall Cobb back to the team, and he's essentially how a lot of, you know, young quarterbacks look at their tight end as being a security blanket. That's what Randall Cobb is. He's just like a warm cup of milk for Aaron Rodgers, where it's like, okay, I can always... Randall Cobb is going to be in the flat, wide open for seven yards whenever I want him. And he wasn't healthy, so I think you know, like not him not being involved in the game made him lock in a little bit on Devontae Adams, who, to be fair, if you're going to pick a guy that you should lock in on, Devontae Adams is a strong choice for but, a lock in receiver. Yeah, but the Niners used that against him and was like, I'm... We're, we know you're going to go to him. I, the Randall Cobb thing is interesting because obviously Rodgers wanted him back. He wants his guys. That was part of his gripe with the offseason. I do think that if they had figured out a way to get Odell, they probably win that game. Yeah, like d- they but do. Does, would Odell want to play in Green Bay? Well, I don't know because I don't it's know too what cold I, to snow there. I don't know what the I don't know what the conversation was. By the way, I I still am winning that bet because it was 12 degrees. It said under 10. People were treating me. I got hacked during the game, but. <laughs> There was a lot of people who defended me with too cold to snow. It was, uh, who knows? It could have been CGI that they added in. Sometimes they do that. To uh, make you, it look you're a nicer. you're making fun of me right now, but I still believe it's too cold to snow at times. 
It absolutely is. Science. There's, there's meteorologists who are chiming in that maybe not technically, but kind of right, which is kind of cool. In very low temperature situations, there are more occasions than not where it doesn't snow. It snows two inches in Antarctica every year. How does that make sense? It's winter all the time. It's just global warming. It's literally nice. winter all the time. Global warming. Well, winter all Bohorquez, the time. Hank Libwood. Bohorquez? Yeah. yeah, and also the guy who scored the touchdown is Talanoa Hufanga. There we go. Thank you. Thank nice. you, Jake. I just don't know what you do with, like, Rodgers probably wants to leave. I don't know. I he, listened, he said, by the way, for three hours to ESPN Milwaukee on Saturday night. It was incredible. He said that Every he's, second of he's, it. Uh, he's happier this year than he has been in the past with Goots. Yeah. Goots and Goots. Yeah. Anyways, their, their relationship took a step forward this year. But maybe that's just the LSD or the ayahuasca <laughs> but, talk. But he, he seems to be happy with everybody now. But I doubt, I don't think that Aaron Rodgers is going to want to come back to Green Bay. As I understand it, based on just my own gut basically i don't think i've i've read any actual quotes from aaron Rodgers that lead me to this uh conclusion but i think the deal was come back for this year yeah and then we'll find a place to trade you in the, like almost a wink wink agreement we'll find a place to trade you in the offseason i think there's probably a lot of packer fans it's probably split but there's definitely it's it's not like a very small minority of packer fans are that are like might be better if we just trade him now and get a lot of draft picks and hit the reset. That's kind of my bigger point of like, he's a really good quarterback. He wins MVPs, but this is two years in a row where it felt like the pack, like their defense did everything. Like they should have, they should have won that game. If you're the MVP, you should have won that. Game. Aaron Rodgers, that was an awesome night. I was smiling ear to ear. What a fucking night. What a night. He should have won that game. He should have won that game. He had the ball, four minutes left. 